Hello, my friend. Welcome to my favorite video of the month. It is Favorites and Fails Countdown Time, where I start from the worst product I tried this month, and then I count all the way to the best product I tried this month. And I have a nice range of stuff for you, from makeup to skincare, lots of price points from very low to higher. And I think you're really gonna like this video. So hang tight, we're gonna get into it right now. Actually, before we get into that, we are going to talk about my hashtag not sponsored feature this month. I usually do some kind of non-makeup related item that I want to share with you or a website or an app that I've found helpful. And I do have something I want to share with you that I think is very important. But before I say that, I just want to just very humbly brag <laughs> about my son's Halloween costume look. He was a murder victim. Uh, his two friends were murderers and then there was another murder victim. And then some, for some reason, one of their friends was a fairy, which I don't really get the connection, but they had a great time trick-or-treating and I was just so proud of this makeup look. So I wanted to share with you how I did it. There was actually a tutorial that I watched to learn about this. Uh, essentially what you do is you take a, just a standard beauty sponge and you take tweezers and you pick at it to make it so that it's textured. So what I did was I used this Milani lipstick as the red that's on his face. This is the Ludacris Matte Lip Crayon in the shade 150, which is called lovesick. That's the red that's on his face. I dotted it on his cheeks and then I blended it with this and then he's got that cut on his forehead. I also after that used the Sigma Sculpt palette. I used this down here, this darkest one, just to you know kind of give it a little bit more dimension and then on his left cheek I used just a tiny bit of this cheapy makeup palette. I try really hard not to use these because I don't trust where what is in them how they're made and all that but I just use the teeniest tiniest little bit of this green just on his left cheek just to make that look a little bit more bruisey and then I put a little concealer on his lips to make him look a little more dead but I was just I was so proud of this because I'm not a special effects person and it looks so good and I wanted to share that with you because I'm just really proud of it but the real hashtag not sponsored is just a plea to my US viewers if you live in the US, I want to ask you very passionately to please vote in the midterm elections this year. I know some of you have already done early voting. I have filled out my practice ballot and I am ready to vote. I just haven't gone and done it yet. I don't know if I'm going to wait till the 8th or if I'm going to go before that. I haven't decided yet, but I definitely want to encourage you, if you have never voted before, if you identify with one particular party or another, you can go to your, just type in your state and then the party that you affiliate with, and it'll give you a list of their recommended candidates if you vote down party lines. But what it also gives you a lot of times is the website that goes along with those candidates. So if you don't vote down party lines, you can check out and see which, which like, candidate really aligns with your personal values. And I, I see people getting discouraged with voting, thinking that it's not important. And that just breaks my heart <laughs> to the core because I do believe that voting is the only way to get what we want to happen. It's the only political power that we have as ordinary citizens. And I do believe it's our civic duty to vote. So if you were deciding whether or not to vote and you weren't quite sure, please use the resources available to figure out who you want to vote for and just take a second to go to your polling place and vote. I very much stay in tune with what's happening politically in our country and I believe in my soul that this election is very, very important if we want to keep the rights that we have as human beings. So no matter what you believe in, please, please, please go vote. It is so important. And now with that being said, let's talk makeup with the worst product that I tried this month. All right, y'all know how much I love my liquid eyeliners. I try so many different kinds because they, for me, I do change them out every three to six months, kind of like mascara. You can get bacteria on the product and I just, I like to switch them out. So I try a lot of liquid eyeliners and this one just did not do it for me. This is the Essence Eyeliner Pen. It just doesn't stay on my lids. I will say I do like the application of this. I'm just gonna swatch it for you right here so you can see how beautiful it is. It is very black. Oh, 
There we go. It is very black. It is very fine. It bends to the eye. Application is no problem at all. There's no seeping into fine lines, nothing weird like that. But what my issue is with this is the lasting power on it. There are quite a few liquid liners that I really love because even if I kind of accidentally go like this on the corner of my eye, my wing will stay on. This is not the case with this. This rubs right off. I also find that it tends to fade on my lid throughout the day, which is not good. <laughs> Very rarely do I find a liquid eyeliner that will actually look less opaque throughout the day. And I don't know what is happening with this. Uh, it, it doesn't smear or smudge. It just kind of goes away. So this is going to be a no for me. I don't think that this will be a repurchase, unfortunately. This past month, I did a review of the Sephora Holiday Lip Kit, and I found one new formula that I love and one that I thought was just kind of meh, not really a fan of, and that was this one here. This is the Give by Gwen Stefani lipstick. It is not a bad lipstick. It's just meh. It, it reminds me of a less expensive drugstore lipstick formula. It's not particularly hydrating. It doesn't have a particularly long-lasting power. It doesn't have a fun vanilla scent because that's something that I personally like. I know not everybody likes that, but I like that. Uh, and it just is very mediocre. There's a little bit of pull when you apply it. Uh, it's just fine. And I feel like, you know, if you're Give by Gwen Stefani and you're doing lipstick, you can nail that formula. They've got a high enough price point that they can invest in some good ingredients to really make that formula stand out. And this is just meh. And I'm sad because I really wanted to love this and I don't. By the way, I want to thank everybody that watched that holiday lip kit video and loved it so much. You encouraged me to want to do more geeky ingredient videos like that. So what I did was I bought this one. This is a Sephora holiday must-haves set. I haven't even opened this yet. I want to give you the full review of the stuff. We'll try everything on all of that next Friday. That's the goal. Uh, and we'll dig all into the ingredients and everything. I'm so excited to share this with you. You, so make sure you're subscribed so that you do not miss that. Moving on to number eight, a brand that was kind enough to send these over in PR, and unfortunately, I was just not a fan. This is the Disney Villains Collection. Uh, it was a kind of a collab between Catrice and Essence, their sister brands. And I, you know, the application of this was very nice. Let me show you. I only wore it twice, I'll be honest with you, but both times I was discouraged, so therefore I'm kind of giving up on it. The color story is absolutely gorgeous on this. No problems as far as application with the shades blending away or, you know, being so pigmented that you really got to work. And the shades are absolutely beautiful. My issue with this was lasting power. I used two different eye primers on the two days that I used this and both times it just faded down to almost nothing by the end of the, of the day, which made me really sad because I really liked the looks that I created. Uh, so yes, they're onto something as far as the application, but they've got to work on how they're going to get that lasting power to be just a little better. I mean, it's absolutely beautiful, but unfortunately it's a no for me. Makes me sad. Even though this next product is very low down, I really just have one complaint on one shade. Other than that, it's fine. It's a fine palette. It's a good palette. This is the ColourPop Not a Box of Chocolates palette, and I think it's absolutely freaking adorable. It looks like this, so you can see it's got those little lines on there that almost look like they're chocolate. But there's one shade in here that I very, very, very much don't like, and it's this shade down here. It's called 90% Cacao, and it might as well be 90% Cacao because it does not blend. It legit does not blend. You put it on your eye and it just stays there and you have to go and then eventually if you mix it with enough shades, eventually it blends out. It's just got way too much pigment in it. It's way too hard to work with. But other than that, I'm really enjoying this palette. I love the foiled shades. Uh, the matte shades are really nice. I like the color selection in it. I do wish it smelled like chocolate though because I think that would be perfect. I, I do. I, I wish the ColourPop would start doing scented palettes because because that's just something that I like. I know not everybody likes it. Just like I was talking about the lipstick, not everybody likes scented stuff, but I do. So selfishly, I want it to smell
smell like chocolate, but it does not. So overall, this is a good eyeshadow palette, especially for a brown tone palette, which we know a lot of us, we have a lot of brown tone palettes, a lot of natural palettes. I think this one is especially nice because it does have some more purpley tone shades in there. So you can create a little bit more dimension rather than just a traditional brown. Um, but yeah, really the only complaint I have is just that one shade. Other than that, it's a good palette. Looking at this, I guess I just didn't have a lot of things that I tried this month that I hated. So let's move into the things that I absolutely love. I'm very thankful that I've gotten some more skincare PR recently so I can really highlight some products that may be a little bit high on the price point, but I can tell you what they are so that you can decide whether they're gonna be good for you or not. These are ones that I'm really enjoying. Let's start with the Ole Henriksen Strength Trainer Peptide Boost Moisturizer. This has such a nice scent. It's like a... A fresh clean with a little bit of fruitiness scent. Here's the texture. It's just very, very light, almost a gel texture to it. The description on the website says that it is a daily moisturizer powered by peptides, amino acids, ceramides, and collagen that quickly doubles hydration, visibly boosts elasticity, improves the look of fine lines and wrinkles, and reinforces the skin's moisture barrier all day. So I dug into the ingredients, and that is what it looks like it does based on the ingredient deck. Of course, you know, depending on how it's formulated and the quality of the ingredients and all that stuff, you can only get so much from the ingredient list. But I can tell you what we can learn from the ingredient list. So first off is that it is water in the top, some texture ingredients, and then the glycerin to pull that water into the skin. There's also some occlusives in here, which is going to lock that water into the skin so that it doesn't dehydrate out into the air. Also pretty high up is mango seed butter, which is a great moisturizer. Then we have niacinamide. I know some of you are sensitive to niacinamide where you might get some flushing uh, of your skin. So if you do have that, you want to stay away from this. But if you don't, Niacinamide is a great ingredient for a lot of people. So it can help with wrinkle smoothing and fine lines. It can also help with hyperpigmentation. And for some people, it definitely helps them with acne as well. The other thing I like about niacinamide is that it can help with ceramide synthesis. So essentially think about your skin cells as kind of like a brick wall and your skin cells are the bricks. Now in between the bricks, you need the mortar or whatever. That's your ceramides. So when you have the ceramides, ceramides producing properly, then it helps your skin barrier to be nice and strong. Beyond that, there are a ton of peptides in here. Now, peptides, you know, the research is a little bit shaky on it. It's not super duper solid, but I personally love peptides in my skincare. The peptides that are in here may help with your collagen production. There's also some peptides in here that may help temporarily make your wrinkles look less deep. And other ones also help with skin regeneration. Beyond that, there's also three different ceramides in here, which again is that mortar between the bricks. All of that is the top layer of the skin. So it's going to help to help your skin to have a nice strong skin barrier and also help with that trans epidermal water loss. I do want to mention in this is some xylitol. So if you have dogs, don't let your dogs lick your face or eat this. Xylitol is poisonous to dogs. And also there is fragrance in here. So if you are anti-fragrance, you definitely want to stay away from this. I personally really love the texture of this. I like the way that it makes my skin feel. It just feels nice and hydrated and moisturized. And I love the ingredient deck. With quote unquote anti-aging skincare, it's hard to say actual results because a lot of it is happening where we can't see. Uh, but I will tell you the moisturizing and hydrating ingredients in here are definitely doing their job. Now we have the second skincare product sent to me by Paula's Choice. Uh, I ran out of my teeny vitamin C serum. So I was really excited when Paula's Choice sent this over. There are so many things that I love about this. This is the C5 Super Boost Moisturizer with 5% vitamin C plus hexapeptide 5. And it is formulated for all skin types. They say it is a multi-active vitamin C moisturizer that combines clinically proven hydration with anti-aging benefits to improve dullness, revival, firmness plus strengthen the skin's barrier. The big selling point on this is the vitamin C that's in here is a more stable form of vitamin C. But beyond that, I personally see the packaging as being a huge plus too in that no lighter air can get in here. I love the pump function. function. I love that it's an opaque container and the texture of this product is just really beautiful. Since you can't see it, I'll show you next to my eyeliner swatch. This is the perfect amount for 
my entire face. You can see it's not super thick, but it's not real watery either. And it just feels great on the skin. I've been using this like I do as a daytime moisturizer, and then I'll put my sunscreen on over top of it. There are quite a few different forms of vitamin C in here, which I personally really like. There's also squalane in here, which is a wonderful skin balancing ingredient. It also helps with trans epidermal water loss. And then we have cocoa sea butter, which is a moisturizer, sodium hyaluronate, which is a humectant to pull that water into the skin. There's also occlusives in here to lock in all of that, which is great. Uh, there, of course, more moisturizers, humectants, uh, antioxidants to fight free radical damage, stuff like that. But what's great about this versus the old Henriksen one is that it is fragrance free for people that are looking for that. But there's, it definitely... I wouldn't say there's no scent to it. There's just no added fragrance. There is a very, very, very mild, mild, mild citrusy, creamy scent to it, uh, which I personally very much enjoy, but it is so, so mild. It definitely doesn't linger on the skin, but when I first apply it, I can definitely smell it just a tad bit. Uh, overall, what I've been doing is I've been using this one, like I said, during the day, and then I've been using this at night as a nighttime moisturizer over top of my serums. So yes, very much recommend both of those skincare products products. Let's get back to makeup at number four. So Kaleidos. I know I messed up and what's been makeup the other week that there is a brand called Kaleido that's different than Kaleidos. We're going to talk about Kaleidos this week uh, and they do did send these to me in PR. These are their blushes. They sent them quite a while ago and I don't know why it's taken me so long to mention them in a what's been makeup because they're a wonderful, wonderful formula. I think it might be the shades are just a little bit different, but I think that also makes them very attractive in that they're not the traditional blush shades that you might already own. But the lasting power on these is wonderful. Application is beautiful. Uh, there are five shades that I've been playing with. Here's another one. Very bright there, but on the skin, it doesn't look quite as bright. Another really bright one there. This one, I have to admit, I have not used yet because it's terrifying to me. <laughs> and this one I have used just a little bit, but I would imagine this is going to look much, much better on someone of a deeper skin tone. The packaging is absolutely gorgeous. I love the little swirl pattern in there. And again, they just, they do everything I want to blush to do. They very nicely build on the cheeks. They have a great lasting power. They look gorgeous on the skin. They're, they're just, they're wonderful product. Number three, I specifically wanted to make sure I mentioned a recommendation from Sephora Brands. And Sephora is having their 30% off sale right now for Sephora brand, along with the VIP, uh, holiday, you know, rouge, all of that madness. But Sephora brand actually has some really good stuff right now. I'll link my video on Sephora brand down below because I did find some gems. This was one of them that I haven't highlighted nearly enough. This is the Size Up Mascara. If you like the Better Than sex mascara, but that one flakes on you, or that one is too mushy gushy, like that one can really clump. This is a wonderful alternative at about half the price. Here is the wand. It's very similar to the better than sex wand. Come on, focus. There you go. Very similar to the better than sex wand, but you can see the formula isn't nearly as clumpy. I will tell you though, this gives beautiful, beautiful length and volume. Uh, and I don't have any problems with it flaking at all like I do with the better than sex. I can't tell you about smudging though, because I don't ever have mascara smudge on me. It just it's not something that happens on my eyes. But as far as flaking, this does a wonderful job not flaking. If you have tried this mascara, I feel like mascara is one of those things that's very very individual based on your own lashes and how much water your eyes produce and how oily your lids are and all of that. I would love to know your feedback on this and whether you love it as much as I do. It's a fantastic mascara and especially it's 12 bucks and then you get your 30% off uh, and I'm going to buy another one of these. I haven't put my cart together yet. I'm buying a couple of expensive skincare things that I'm re-upping on and I'm re-upping on this because it is awesome. Usually I save the very last item for something that surprised me. And now I'm going to tell you that the last two are items that surprised me. So back a long time ago, I got this Pat McGrath lipstick and I found it to be very dry and uncomfortable. And you can see how much I've used it. I've hardly used it at all because I really didn't like the formula. I was not impressed by it at all. And I guess maybe they reformulated. I don't know. I got this in that same Sephora holiday lip kit and I freaking love this. I wish 
I wore red lipsticks more often so that I could wear this more often. This is such a beautiful, beautiful product. I went on a cruise with my mom recently to New England and I brought this with me and I wore this on their dress up night because on Royal Caribbean they have like a dress up evening and I wore it to dinner. And the way that the, the seating works out is you end up sitting at tables a lot of times with people that you don't know. And I sat with some very, very lovely people and I wore this lipstick and they asked me, you know, what lipstick are you wearing? And I told them it was the Pat McGrath Matte Trance lipstick. I'm telling you, this stayed on throughout dinner and I was shocked and everybody at the table was shocked. They were like, I need to get that lipstick. I cannot believe that lipstick is still on your lips. And I was like, I know, like weird, right? That's so cool. Because it was the first time it actually functionally worn a matte trance lipstick in a couple of years since I had bought this one and not liked it. So very, very shocked at how comfortable this was for a matte lipstick and the lasting power and how beautiful it looked. I will definitely look into buying more of these, probably not anytime soon because they are really expensive, but it's definitely on my radar for future purchases. And then finally, at number one, ta -da! Okay, so Lethal Cosmetics. I don't know a lot about Lethal Cosmetics. The biggest thing I know about Lethal Cosmetics is my girl Teresa from Teresa is Dead collabs with them. She's collabed with them now a second time on this Teresa is Lethal palette. I do love the palette, but what I want to share with you is actually the blush. Oh my gosh, this blush is gorgeous. I am wearing it today. Lasting Powers, fantastic. Uh, and it, it just gives the most beautiful shine on the skin. And I, I don't know what I was expecting, but I was like, well, Lethal's kind of known for their eyeshadows, so I didn't expect the blush to be anything special. But it really is a fantastic blush. I do wish that it came in some kind of packaging. Uh, that's the, really my only complaint about it. I'm sure I can find some kind of magnetic palette to put it in, but I haven't gotten that far yet. Lately, it's just been sitting out because I've used it almost every day since I've got it when I wear makeup. And it's just a wonderful, wonderful product. And I'm so thankful that Teresa was kind enough to get them to send these over to me because I wouldn't have thought of these. I wouldn't have thought to buy a Lethal Cosmetics blush, but they knocked it out of the park with this. It did have like a little bacon print on it, but I rubbed it off because I've been using it so much. The way this blends out is just so freaking gorgeous. It doesn't sit on top of the skin. It really just melds into the skin and it's so I just I can't say enough good things about this Teresa you did a fantastic job with this I'm so excited to keep using this and try more blushes from Lethal Cosmetics at this point my friend it is your turn in the collective brain of makeup awesomeness where we help each other not to buy crap and to buy things that are totally worth it it is your turn to work together with the collective and we are going to share our brains down in the comments down below because I'm only one person with one face and one opinion so your opinion is so, so important in helping people not to buy crap because just because something doesn't work for me doesn't mean it's not going to, that it isn't going to work for somebody else. And just because something does work for me doesn't mean that it's not going to work for somebody else. So anything that you've tried here, I would love to know your opinion and your thoughts so that we can all work together to make sure we're spending our money wisely. Thank you again so, so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. It tells YouTube to share it with other people. People. And if you would like to hang out just a little bit longer, YouTube should be recommending a couple of videos for you right over here to watch, including one that I picked out special for you on the bottom. But if you do need to go, it is no problem at all. Totally get it. Thank you for hanging out as long as you did. And mad love to you. And I will see you in a video very, very soon. Bye.